name is uh, Herbert Thomas Gomba. I am a councillor from Ward 27, Glenora, elected on an MTC ticket, and I'm the current mayor of the city of Harare. So our residents want to know what is happening in the city. We've had crisis after crisis. Where are we? Yes, um, um, we took over a city that was heavily in debt. Uh, according to my assessment, it was indebted to a tune of $500 million. And um, what's happening now is to turn around the city, transform it in accordance to the mandate as was given to me by the residents and the political party that sponsored our electoral campaigns. Uh, we have started to do some in initiatives that have seen the party uh, that has seen the council working on a number of issues which were uh, giving some problems to residents within the council area of jurisdiction. We launched our initial 100 day plan which was meant to arrest the decline in revenue collection the decline in standards of work, the decline in terms of uh, uh, service delivery. And uh, the 100 day plan was an initial plan that we had devised as a strategy to make sure that the city starts to work again. We invested in the city's infrastructure within the 100 days and in the context of the strategy. That's why we were able to increase our revenue, start to pay employee salaries. That's why we were able to do some works that people are proud of when they go around, when they see what we have done, the Highland Lenny Goose roundabout, we were able to finish the Quasar Library, we were able to finish the Tariro Open Clinic, we were able to finish the Gay Don Arai Drive roundabout, we were able to do certain roads, and we were also able to procured much needed instruments of use within the municipality. We worked on a number of issues. Some of them were to do with uh, the indiscipline amongst the employees. We have actually reigned in on corrupt tendencies amongst the employees. That you have seen a number of them being dismissed suspended, moved from their workplaces. And we are continuously working on that. We have instituted two inquiries in terms of land allocations, land use, how the markets were operating. And I'm satisfied that we are doing our work in terms of the expectations of progressive residents. So when we took over as a council, revenue was hovering around 13 million RTGS per month. We managed to increase revenue to around 20 million through numerous initiatives that we implemented. When we took over, employees had not been paid and they were first with a, an eight-month backlog in terms of salaries. We have managed to pay that. 
and uh, we are currently left with one month and, and two bonuses. That wasn't happening before and now it's happening and we are grateful as the leadership of council that we are making inroads in trying to salvage a situation that was deteriorating very fast. When we took over, we discovered that most of the systems, you know, systems to do with uh, movement of documents, revenue collection, audits, were lagging behind. We introduced a robust system. Uh, we removed the billing, the old billing system, primarily because we could not proceed to do our accounts on the basis of the BIQ system that was there. You couldn't do even a trial balance on, on, on the billing system which was there. So we took a bold measure to say, no, we must stop this. We then tendered and introduced a better ERP system that we are implementing. And I'm glad to say, as of now, around 18 districts have been connected. So some residents, to a larger extent, have started to receive their bills. And as we move towards the mid of the the mid of October, hopefully all of the uh, of the residents will be able to receive their bills. We are faced with challenges in terms of infrastructure which has not been invested in for years, particularly infrastructure to do with roads network, the roads network, water, uh, infrastructure to do with uh, lighting, public lighting, district offices, council schools, all of them deteriorated to unacceptable levels. And we are now working towards refurbishment and expansion of the infrastructure. Some people would recall that last year we entered into an arrangement with uh, Liquid where we replaced around 50 kilometers of sewer pipelines. We are going to continue to do that in order to make sure that we deal with uh, the massive leakages of sewer and water uh, which has caused us to lose some revenue. We employed the town clerk during our time and we have given him the performance based contract. We have gone further to ask the town clerk to also give his subordinates performance-based contracts. And I'm grateful that I witnessed and they are partaked into the signing of signatures for directors, departmental heads, uh, divisional heads, and, and the town clerk. We have also introduced new revenue sources for the council, new application fees, and uh, uh, we are going to proceed to be able to introduce new revenue sources which are technologically based in order for us to be able to increase revenue for the council. These are more to do with uh, coming up with a, 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 an eco cash sort of like platform for the municipality taking revenue from residents who want to use our platform and giving competition to established private sector companies. We also would want to create a platform which can be used to enroll kids at municipal schools. 
to enroll pregnant women at our municipal maternity schools, maternity clinics, sorry. These are some of the platforms that we are going to introduce in the first quarter of next year and we are currently working on that. We also are going to be introducing new council-owned companies. Particularly next year we are looking at the introduction of uh, a biogas manufacturing plant at our sewer plants. We are also inten intending to come up with a fertilizer manufacturing company, organic fertilizer, to utilize our waste. And uh, we are about to enter into numerous joint ventures for for an upmarket world class municipal graveyard. We are also in the process of finalizing a deal with a company to convert waste into energy. And that is going to help us to commercialize to a larger extent a refuse collection. And that would, at the tail end of it, help us to keep the city clean. And when we took over, you would understand that vendors were all over. We made a decision to say we must relocate them. And now I can safely say other residents are able to move around town to do their business without affecting the ability of the vendors to trade. And these are some of the issues that we have, to work, we have been working on. And I'm glad that we have achieved to a larger extent a certain degree of success. In terms of the water situation, yes, I agree we faced some challenges which were more induced by the removal of the one is to one policy by government that led us to seek to trade on a on an interbank market that does not help us at all because we are not a profit making organization. We are a service oriented organization that charges just to break even, not to make profit. Therefore the removal of the of the one is to one policy pushed us to seek to buy foreign currency from an Indian market whose rate is not predictable and was higher. That forced us to consider increasing rates, forced us to come up with a supplemental budget that the Ministry of Local Government is looking at. We would have wanted a situation where government would subsidize the procurement of chemicals. But it was unfortunate that uh, they announced a policy that did not help us at all in terms of them preparing, preparing our finances. And it made us made it very expensive for us to be able to access forex on an interbank market that is uh, mm -hmm. unpredictable as I have said before. We are in discussion with uh, the Ministry of Lower Government, the Ministry of Finance to look at options, which options can help us to mitigate on the situation that our people are facing and uh, we are looking at the centralization of the procurement of water chemicals. Let me quickly say the challenges that are being faced in Harare are not only isolated to Harare. 
they are all over. Even rural district councils are facing challenges to procure chemicals. Those that supply water to growth points are also raising those issues. So this is not a political matter. It's an issue of availability of resources for us to be able to procure the chemicals. As part of our strategy, we had thought of looking at, uh, at introducing the manufacturing of certain chemicals at our plant. We flighted a tender around May, and it has not been adjudicated. And we are waiting for PRAS to look at how they can then help us to move forward, to approve certainly the company that we should be engaged with, so that then we can look at the manufacturing of chemicals at the plant, at the plant, the Wooten Jeffrey plant. I want to inform the residents that even locally made chemicals are being charged in forex. So I understand that the there have been statements to the effect that uh, we should buy local. Yes, in as much as I subscribe to that, it has to be clear that even buying local entails cutting with forex. This is why Zimfos, as a local com company owned by government, is asking council to pay them 40 million out of the calculations using an interbank market rating system. So it implies that even if they accept RTGS, but their charges and their calculations are based on the rating and the strength of the US dollar currency. So, we are also settled with a huge debt. So, you would uh, agree with me certainly that there are residents who are also failing to pay. And that has also affected our ability to service the city. As I am talking to you right now, we are all there around 1 billion 100 RTGS which money is supposed to be coming from business, residents, government, the church, and other institutions. So, the issues around the availability of service is dependent on the ability of residents to pay. On the un uh, ability of residents to understand that ours is a mandate to resuscitate service. That's the mandate that we we have. It's not a man it's, it's not a mandate to continuously give out service but to resuscitate a service. My assessment tells me that Surely, the ability to deliver service in the last years was compromised. There's nothing much to talk about in terms of service. So we really need to be able to capacitate those departments which we use to be able to give people service. All right, thank you so much, um, Mayor, uh, Councillor Herbert Gumba. Now, residents have been asking, you keep on saying that uh, you are limited in terms of your ability to deliver service because of certain legislation that uh, bog your work down. Now, residents would want to know, what are those regulations that are really mitigating against you actually delivering service to the people? There are, there are three. Uh, laws. The first one is the procurement 
and the disposal of Public Assets Act, the one that we use to procure uh, assets or instruments that we would want to use. Mm -hmm. Council is no longer allowed to send someone to shops to, to, to just buy, just to go through the procurement regulatory authority of Zimbabwe. And that's a process that takes long and that has limited our ability to service the city in terms of the expected timelines. Uh, let's maybe let's uh, let's look at that procurement uh, act in particular. There is a leak that yes. is in Mavuku or in Mainway Meadows yes. or somewhere yes. around the town, yes. and residents inform the city, and the city is unable mm -hmm. to respond as quickly as residents expect. Yes. Now the city is losing um, lots of water yes. unpaid for. Uh, due to these leakages. Now, what needs to be done in order for council and PRAS to meet halfway so that residents get the service that they need? Yeah, we, we must revert back to the old system where municipalities were allowed to procure uh, using the internal processes. And uh, that entails devolution of procurement powers from PRAS, which is housed in the OPC to local authorities in terms of the old way where it was under the Urban Councils Act, you would just procure immediately after you call for a special meeting to respond to emergencies. Now you can't do that. You simply have to go back to press to seek for approvals. All right, let's talk about the next uh, piece of legislation that affects you. The Joint Venture Act requires that uh, you, you seek for approvals from cabinet and uh, and uh, the presidency when you would want to enter into an arrangement uh, with the private uh, sector players, some private sector players. That would entail that uh, before signing an agreement with anyone who would want to enter into joint venture with the municipality, you then are supposed to seek for approvals. The other uh, legislative framework that has been affecting our ability to service the city mm. is, the, is, is the Urban Council Act. It requires a, a, a lot of uh, amendments, particularly where it asks the local government board to approve our appointments. That has uh, uh, impacted on our ability to look for qualified personnel to be able to man our departments. Let's go, let's go into that bit where you are able to hire and fire according to the needs uh, of council. Can you give us um, a look into how council is right now? I understand the directors were acting and others that you have let go but because the council is not, the minister has not given approval for their firing. Tell us how that affects your work. Uh, it affects us to a large extent because uh, um, it increases uh, our cost uh, when we are paying the directors out when the eventual approval has been given. Uh, you know, when you are dismissed, it has to be calculated backward. Mm -hmm. and, and that increases our cost as a council. It also means that um, you create a stubborn workforce within municipalities. One that says uh, I'm not going to be dismissed because the process does allow for approvals at the later stage from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, that is affected our service, servicing of the city. All right, so we're just going to read a few comments that uh, residents and, and, and Zimbabweans have been sending on the platform as you spoke. Um, Vambu, Vambu feels that you really spoiled and failed at other citizens as a whole. So this is just comments. I'll read them as they are coming. Akim Mazarura says, what about the fact that Kuti Harari municipal staff is overpaid while we don't get quality services? Maybe you can respond is, to is that. Uh, in, for me to be able to respond to Bam Bam, I think he is just imagining a situation that is not real. Uh, we have been able to service this city um, 
to a large extent the transformation that people are seeing around and the feedback that we are getting makes him a minority in terms of his assessment of our work. Uh, in, in, uh, I would ask that you repeat that. that, that Akim Mazarure says, what about the fact that Harare municipal staff is overpaid while we don't have quality services? No, it's also false. Uh, it was being paid out by the previous mayor. But it was wrong in the sense that um, if you look and compare that which we pay our staff and that which government is paying, you can actually see that we are losing so many people who are going to government. We have lost eight nurses in a period of two months. And most of them are going to government. And why would they go to government if we are overpaying? Um, what has been happening is that we have not increased our employee salaries for over four years. And uh, the only increment was the one that we have approved mm -hmm. uh, for starting from August. We have made some adjustments. And again, even if you are to consider those adju adjustments, you can agree with me that the employees are not being pay overpaid. Um, the lowest paid employee in council gets around 400 teachers. So I think it's, um, it's a stat statement coming from someone who has not researched much in terms of what's happening within the municipality. All right, Lee, we go back to the issue of water with Roderick Shaj, who says, Commitment Meadows are Punamvura. It has been a month, Kusina. Yes. No, it's not a question of saying Modautu and Maitese. Because it, it is never a, a Harare council problem. Whose problem is it? It's, 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 a, it's a national problem. Yeah, we all are collectively responsible to make sure that uh, service is given to people. Uh, it starts with him, it starts with me, it starts with government. Uh, it's a circle. If someone breaks the circle, mm -hmm. then obviously uh, we are bound to be uh, uh, facing where, da, where does this circle so, start? <laughs> yes, it's, it's, um, it started when the, the whites came to uh, build the infrastructure that we are getting, uh, enjoying, uh, getting services from. And beyond that, nothing was ever built. So, um, it means now I am supposed to be um, distributing water to Zimba Road District Council, to Caledonia, which is in Goromunzi, to Epworth, to Chitumbiza, to Norton, to many Wemidos. That's where the challenge is, where we did not plan ahead and population was growing. And uh, I don't think uh, uh, that can be something that you can say was caused by this council. Um, the last investment, meaningful investment into the water infrastructure was done in 1976 when Moton Jeffrey was expanded. So uh, what, is, what is the plan then? Okay, we've got all these problems, but the fact is people are carrying buckets to find water somewhere else. People are sleeping at, um, at, at water sources to access this precious liquid. And the city of Harare is saying that it cannot be blamed because um, it, it's a planning system that didn't take place when it should have taken place. And they are saying government should do something and government is looking at city of Harare. Now somebody was saying, uh, in other comments, Kuti Akuna Maiwa Noya Musa Mwanasiwa. Is politics, is politics more important than the residents? Okay. okay. Let me give a brief background to the water crisis that we are facing. In 1990, a study was undertaken by the African Development Bank and a German company, G. KW was engaged. Mm -hmm. It made recommendations to central government to say by 1996, Harare should have a new water source. Why was it making a recommendation to government? Precisely because where these water masses are supposed to be constructed mm -hmm. is government land. 
And if you look at the Water Act, it's the government's responsibility to do that. Then when the tender was later cancelled, after I, I'm sure the person had died, the tender was then cancelled. Then government started to look for other people who can come over and start to, to invest into, into Kunj. They chose Sino Hydro mm -hmm. and again it got into issues and, and problems. Mm -hmm. Now they are not sure as to whether they will choose for a, they will look for another Chinese company or they will seek to, uh, to fund themselves. Mm -hmm. We are now waiting for the upcoming um, 2020 budget, national budget, to see whether they are serious in terms of investing into the water infrastructure uh, mm -hmm. within the capital city. Has the city followed up on the said money? Because um, on the 26th, if I'm not mistaken, of July 2019, uh, the sitting president, uh, Emerson Munangagwa, said he had secured $690 million towards the construction of Kunjum Sami um, dams. Maybe you can, you know, have you followed up as council on yeah, that money? Yes, yes, I've, I've discussed with him. Um, on the need to expedite the construction of Kunji and Hamsan. Um, I told him of the urgency and the need to do it now. Mm -hmm. That was last year when I met him. Um, but uh, by merely making that statement, it gives credence to what I was saying that they are responsible. So what happened to the money? And they have accept accepted the responsibility mm -hmm. to say they are the ones who are supposed to do it. So I see no reason why people should blame it over that. But what happened to the money? Because can I It was an announcement. Yeah, it yeah. was an announcement before the elections, I'm sure, in 2018. But no one sorry. saw the money. Okay. Yes. I didn't see the money. I only asked him to say, now that you, you have made an announcement, can you then ensure influence using your position, influence for the expedition of, of the construction. Okay. Tell us about the $37 million that uh, uh, the finance minister has avowed. The first thing is for our people to understand that it's 37 million RTGs. That's okay. what I would want them to know and get to understand. Then the next thing is that... In, in other words, it won't do much? Or what? The next thing is that... Uh, yeah, because you, you, you would certainly create an expectation out of nothing. Okay. Yeah. So, um, again, people must then not come back to me and say, you were given a lot of money and what did you use it for? Uh, the 37 is meant to buy 8,000 water meters, do 10 kilo, a 10 kilometer pipe replacement program. And then to complement our already in existence efforts to, to replace the clarifiers and filters in Hong Kong uh, and to do the distribution network. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what the money is supposed to be doing. But I, 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 would, I, I would have wanted a situation where I would go back to government and say, please, can you give us nine million United States dollars for us to buy chemicals for three months, for us then to move away from this um, cycle of uh, looking for chemicals well after they have been exhausted. Trimo Muderere says he is the most hands-on mayor for Harare so far who is in touch with reality. He is open to new ideas and strives to benchmark with standard practice elsewhere. Given a stable macroeconomic environment, he would do wonders for the city. So here is somebody who is really complimenting I, I want uh, to thank you, you and your team. He says his biggest struggle is to deliver in a stressed social economic context. Best wishes, your worship, Mayor Herbert Kumba. My submission is for the mayor to prioritize funding of the Harare Master Plan and its completion during his tenure. 
most of the challenges the city is currently seized with will best and holistically be addressed through the master plan from traffic and transportation, portable water and wastewater management, land use, the environment can best be articulated more sustainably at the master plan level. Yes, that's, that's correct. Maybe you can uh, take us through. Yes. Does Harare have when, a master plan? When I was the chairman of the Environmental Management Committee, we launched that uh, process to start to redo the master plan because the old master plan was done 25 years ago. So in a normal situation, we are supposed to be doing a master plan each time after every 15 years. So yesterday we were having our, our full council and uh, we made resources available for the planners to be able to come up with the master plan. Uh, when I went to, my, to Washington DC, I was in discussion with the World Bank guys for them to be able to send an expert to have a look at what the local planners would have done. Mm -hmm. So I was in discussion with uh, the Urban uh, Planning Institute, uh, which is based in Washington, and um, we have agreed that they will play a critical role in seeing us through the master plan. Uh, it entails coming up with uh, so many, uh, uh, coming up with a new traffic plan, mm -hmm. coming up with a new water master plan, coming up with the road, etc. etc. So I'm glad that uh, the viewer has seen it and uh, it uh, is recommended that we proceed to do it and we are going to accept and appreciate that we are going to move ahead and do it now that the resources are available. Wonderful. Now people would want to know, we've had a serious challenge in transportation. Yes. Does Arari have a transportation system? Yes. If yes, what are the, where are we really? Takambuzo, what do you and then nothing. Now we've got Zupkos that are very erratic. Yes. Yeah. Um, let me take you back to 1986, where government, central government, took over the running of, of uh, public transport in municipalities. They then created the Zupko out of municipal assets. And when we then tried to engage the people who had indicated, expressed an interest to partner with us to bring the solar buses, mm -hmm. the central government involved certain legislation to say this is our responsibility. Mm -hmm. So we were taken back because uh, of that retrogressive action that was undertaken. Uh, we now are looking at uh, the introduction of uh, monorail and we have received uh, an expression of interest from people who are willing to partner with us. That's what we are pursuing now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Alright, we have got um, Henry Sengende. Antina Henry, thank you my mayor. Your English is better than... I think someone is just throwing in a jab there. <laughs> uh, good day, Your Worship. Thank you for interacting with us. Can, um, can you build a new primary and secondary school in Fidelity Southview Park opposite Amalinda Road? The school stands are there, but nothing is being done. Yes, uh, we are working with the uh, CFI who are the developers there. And I uh, would want them to end over that part to us and uh, we are in constant discussion and I hope the discussions will yield some positive results. Um, currently for the benefit of, of, our, of our people, we are constructing three primary schools, one in Kwazana, one in Budiriro and, and uh, the other one in, in Hopi. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, that came well after we have uh, uh, finished the construction of the other school in Hopi. Okay. Uh, so uh, after that we we'll definitely come to do it uh, the way they want us to do it in the area. 
Okay, Devi Matt Chimza, I hope you answered there. Tina Simbi Soranga and Zimea Gomba, thank you for your service. How about issuing municipal bonds to fund city plans to build infrastructure, solve water crisis, etc? We are Ubunza. Why not issue municipal bonds? That was what wa was on the agenda when I went to meet the Minister of Finance. Uh, people must understand that uh, uh, the 37 million uh, that was announced by government was uh, well after our request to government. It's not money that uh, came from them thinking of us or thinking of helping us. No. We wrote to them to say we are facing challenges, which challenges would require their intervention. We also uh, had a meeting, uh, I led a delegation to minister to this office. That led to the uh, removal of the penalties which government had uh, uh, put on us, uh, uh, penalties amounting to 135 million. So uh, there are efforts from our part to engage government to say government may you lead and leadership entails uh, making sure that uh, you also come up with uh, municipal bonds to fund uh, Infrastructure for infrastructure development. Wonderful. Um, Simbi Soranga there with that um, with that suggestion for municipal bonds. And then we've got Tontin who says, Mayor, why did you fail to meet the United Nations delegation? No, I didn't I, I did not fail to meet them. They came, I was told by the provincial ministry to say come over for us to be able to meet them. But uh, when I went there to their offices, mm. uh, they told me that uh, the uh, Foreign Affairs Ministry, which was supposed to facilitate for that, mm -hmm. was not ready and the guy was not picking up his calls, their calls. So we ended up returning to town house, basically because we couldn't stay and, and, uh, and wait when there was no clarity as to what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So yesterday you mentioned the full uh, council meeting in which there were a number of issues that were raised and uh, what the public media has uh, reported, the issue of uh, land scams yes. that is taking place. Uh, can you give us highlights into that matter? Yes, uh, we have seen that certain individuals amongst our employees were benefiting from uh, council processes in terms of land acquisition. And, uh, they were acquiring land in a manner that was not consistent to the law and to the police of council. So we instituted some investigations and we were able to suspend four municipal officers from the survey department. We then went further to look at the leases and the sales and now we are proceeding to look at the rented accommodation um, where most of the rented accommodation are being rented out to third parties at, at, a, at a higher fee than what council is, is asking for. So it's work in progress and um, I'm glad that uh, we are managing and uh, we, are, we have been able to clean the council off or elements we have been benefiting uh, at the expense of the municipality. Somebody asked, is, why is City Council charging land in US dollars? We don't charge land in US dollars. No, we base our, our valuations in US dollars, but we then ask people to pay us using the local component. Why? Because of the inflation. If we don't do it, we sell land cheaply. And you, you I agree with me that land is a scarce commodity. So we would want to benchmark our calculations on, on, the, on the US dollar. All right, we've got Tafaz Wamunjanja. Thank you for that response, Mayor. Tafaz Wamunjanja says, Mayor Gomba, can you clarify to us what is the role of Ministry of Local Government in administering local authorities? Does government play a role 
in infrastructure development. I know you, you touched yes. on it, but maybe for clarity's sake, okay. Minyara is asking if you can uh, clarify. The ministry administers the Urban Councils Act, uh, which is the law that we use when we are um, operating or managing local authorities. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are certain powers which were given to the minister if you read that law. Uh, the minister has got powers to give direction to municipalities. He has got uh, powers to to approve certain actions of of, of of councils across the country. If we want to borrow money from uh, financial institutions, we have to get borrowing powers from the minister. And the minister is is the one who sets up the local government board. So the local government board is mandated at law to approve uh, dismissals of senior employees in council. The minister is also empowered to approve or disapprove uh, uh, allowances for councillors. So those are some of the responsibilities of the minister. That's right. led by the minister. Tafazo goes on to ask another question. I think you've talked about it, but for his sake, Munyara Zimjanja will speak to this issue again. Who is responsible for building and maintaining of dams, Zinwa or HCC? Okay. It depends with uh, the dams that he is referring to. Uh -huh. Lecturer is owned by the city of Harare. 87% owned by the city of Ara and the and second dam mm -hmm. are owned by the city of Ara. So you are responsible for maintaining them? Yes. Okay. The current ones. And what we are asking for is for government to construct additional dams because of the population growth. So these were identified a long time ago, mm -hmm. certainly 30 years ago, that uh, government must construct Kunj. Musani and Munda. Mm -hmm. yeah. In terms of the water of the Water Act and the Zinwa Act, the responsibility lies within the Ministry of Water, which is currently being led by mm -hmm. Parents mm -hmm. Shiri. He's the man to ask as to why there are no dams being constructed for for urban centers. All right. And Munyara Ziara Chijande says, my concern is water, yes. drinking water. How safe is it? And availability in some areas such as Mudiri. Yeah, it's, it's safe to the ex extent of the availability of the chemicals. So if the chemicals are there, uh, then water is safe. And when this it's is not why, there, you shut down? Yes. This is why then the shutting down is then implemented when there are no chemicals. It's precisely because we don't want to give people water which is not safe to drink. Uh, but again, maybe to help the, uh, the person who has asked the question to understand what we are doing currently. Yes. We have cited a tender where we are simply saying we would want new technology to, to, to work with new solutions for us to be able to identify a new chemical that addresses our situation. Mm -hmm. uh, these chemicals have been used for, for nearly 25 years. And I would want to believe that uh, uh, because of the increase in population and in pollution mm -hmm. and increase in uh, population would require a new chemical that addresses our situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I don't agree that uh, we should be using uh, old chemicals in, in, a, in an environment of high pollution, in an environment of new uh, pollutants coming uh, in. Alright, and then there's somebody who's asking Kuti, Diana no tora mitero ye misika ziripu coca cola kumpeza namu eh ikanzure tora mitero ito. It's cancelled to a larger extent, but I know there are some political activists who are helping themselves out. I have made a report to central government to say, can you come over and assist us to deal with uh, uh, space baroning in 
in co uh, at the Coca Cola uh, compound mm -hmm. at uh, the Glenview Area Eight um, Market and at, uh, at the Machipisa Market. Mm -hmm. and if they are to then uh, come over and help us, and helping us means uh, availing the necessary uh, policing instruments for us to be able to arrest people. All right, I think it is a wind down this uh, conversation, uh, Mayor. Pane Mvunzo, Uruku Vakuna Bidu Maukuti, what did he do with the Chinese loan for Morton ah, Jeffrey okay, okay. when he was the environmental <laughs> chairperson? Koma Stenza, why did he get some US dollar? Yes. Why is he the only employer who yeah. have failed to increase employees' earnings in these trying times? No, no, yeah? yeah. He's, he's, he's detached. From reality, <laughs> because we actually increased our our employee salaries okay. uh, last last month, I think mm -hmm. we were able to increase. But uh, again, in terms of the one foot four, uh, this was a material based deal. It was not money coming from China, uh, coming into the uh, municipal account. It was a, a, a situation where uh, you would go to the plant if you want uh, pumps. Mm -hmm. You to get new pumps if you want uh, the digital platform that we are using there. It would come over from China, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So it never came as one forty four. Uh, I think it's uh, it's now common knowledge that it came as seventy two. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure why he is referring to one forty four. It came as seventy two, and uh, that money was used to do most of the work works which were done at Morton Jeffrey. Uh, I, I would challenge those that feel that the money was not used in accordance to the agreement mm -hmm. to come and seek to visit Morton Jeffrey. They will be disappointed. Um, a lot of work was done. And let me ask them to say, if we had not looked for 144, mm -hmm. if we had not uh, agreed with the Chinese, because this was, this was money which was looked for by an MDC council. It's us who went out of our way to look for money. Mm -hmm. I remember around 2008, water was still under Zimu. And it was central government which made efforts to retain uh, the management of water within Harare. Why did they do that? Mm -hmm. Because they encountered problems in the way they were managing. So around 2008-2009, when water came back, we started to look at how best we can uh, work on the infrastructure because we discovered that when it returned, it was uh, the infrastructure had gone down in terms of uh, uh, what it was when it went to Zima. Mm -hmm. So we then looked for 144 to try to refurbish and to expand the infrastructure. So, so was the first thing before was you, to before thank, you proceed, yes. was the 144 agreement between city council and China or between China and the government of it, it was an agreement between the city of Harare and the Chinese, but it was guaranteed by central government. Okay. Yes. So Chinjeku Tanga and Jekuti Wan was at Wunza Maga Shandi say. They should go ten now to at least Magatada Mari. Because the Papa Sina Mari, I tell you, it was a disaster. And remember in 2008 there was cholera, mm -hmm. and we had to look for money for us to be able to, uh, to use it to build up the capacity of our facilities to provide us with water. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, why then it came as 72, not as 144? It was precisely because mm -hmm. the Mugabe government was owing the Chinese uh, 250 million, which was money they had borrowed for something else. But because they had guaranteed our loan, mm -hmm. the Chinese could not proceed to continuously give us money because government had breached on certain obligations it had made. Mm -hmm. This is why the Chinese are refusing to give us the balance. As a Magatenka, you know, Motkarizi, Mandu, Pam Soros, Kutaura, 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 Kuta
but election ya kazi kwa muna July. Okay. Saka paka isi kwa commission, mm -hmm. ya inge ina Dr. Tendai Mahachi, ina Alfred Tome, who was the provincial administrator, na ozi ya sivute, who is the current ZANU-PF member of parliament for Kormans. Okay. Those uh, three individuals were the ones who were running the city. They are the ones who authorized for the purchase uh, of, of the SUV vehicles that people are talking about. So it's not, it's not about uh, an MDC council. Mm. It's about the matter going back to, <laughs> to, to the Ministry of Local Government which appointed that commission, the caretaker council that took over from council. Then again, the Minister of Local Government then authorized that purchase which, which happened. So it, it has nothing to do with uh, councillors, it has nothing to do with MDC, it has nothing to do with residents, it has more to do with ZANU PF as a political party. Okay. Um, Leo Marimbe, you asked, I want to know the level of wages and pay for city employees versus the revenue being collected. I'm sure that question has been adequately answered previously. Patricia Shinyoka, you say, are you able to keep us updated on your progress on Facebook? Have Arare City Council pages, please. Uh, these will post as well for the city of Arare because it does have a, a Facebook page and a website. Yes. All right, Tafatu uh, Munjanja, you have come back again, and this question, I'm sure this one is, is critical because uh, we've had problems in Glenview, especially with cholera, and here's this question. Looking at the rate of boreholes being constructed, is this not an environmental disaster waiting to happen in the future with regards to the water table and stability of foundation houses, etc.? It is. Um, it's a problem that is going to visit us in the coming years. Uh, why? Because uh, the solution to the availability of adequate water mm -hmm. lies in the ability of government to construct Kunji, Sami and Muda. The tragedy around the planning that was done is that you created Harare as the capital, mm -hmm. but you went on to create satellite towns around Harare. And those satellite towns that, that does not have their own water sources. Mm -hmm. So they rely on Harare. So Chitungi doesn't have a water source, doesn't have a sewer plant. So it gets water from Harare, mm -hmm. paid for by Harare residents. And it doesn't pay, but they also discharge their sewer into Harare. You also have the uh, Norton, it doesn't have its own standalone uh, treatment plant. You also have Fwith, you also have Rua. Mm -hmm. and, and now we have uh, uh, newcomers, the Zimbas and the Kormonses. They are also building around, around the capital mm -hmm. and uh, in trying to get value from their land, they've um, um, designed the layout plans. Uh, at, the, at, the, at the boundary of Harare and they have been selling those to prospective buyers and that entails them connecting to our own uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. which, to, which they are not paying for. As I am talking to you right now, Chitungi is all city of Harare, 15 million RTGS, not on 8 million, uh, Rua around 4 million, um, and uh, this has affected our ability to uh, go monzi, certainly the uh, us for the connections that were done to Caledonia. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, uh, the problems are more to do with the Harare, uh, fewer residents being uh, able to pay for uh, services to service uh, a huge population uh, uh, that is uh, also coming from uh, satellite towns around Harare. Con but in terms of why Glenview and Budiriro, um, those suburbs are always having a recurrence of, of cholera. Mm -hmm. When uh, uh, Glenview and Budiriro were set up by uh, Muzorewa, I think that was Muzorewa Smith government, uh, when they were planned for, they were supposed to uh, have less than 26,000 
houses. And they were supposed to have a sewer treatment plant for the two suburbs. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that was not done uh, at the advent of independence. Uh, so, uh, the population has uh, increased to probably around 50,000 houses uh, for both suburbs. So, what it means is that uh, we should now proceed to build or construct a new sewer treatment plant for the, for the two suburbs and then come back to open up the sewer uh, pipes to enlarge them, to increase and expand for mm. the, uh, for the uh, pipes to be able to take the sewer to the plant. Is of now what's happening is that the sewer is coming back because the, uh, the size of the sizes of the, uh, of the pipes mm -hmm. which were then uh, put in when the suburbs were constructed. All right, we, need, we really need to wrap up now. I think in the next five minutes we should be concluding this discussion, Mayor. Uh, La Frica Quaker says, uh, good question, Tafazwa. The water table has been messed up. Very soon we'll be having a lot of sinkholes. So that's a comment coming from La Frica. Leo uh, Marimbe, um, I'll just take those questions at once. Leo Marimbe says, it was regrets as the computer had broken down each of the energy. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, an old billing system that we replaced and we are working uh, towards the erection of a new billing system. Yes. Has this new billing system yes. taken note of what people paid for? Yes. Okay, yeah. fine. And we are also going to be able to uh, consult the residents to say, if you are not happy with your bill, can you come over and we discuss? Okay. Yes. All right. Constance Kinan says, why people pay water bills, but there's no water supply? Yes. Um, it's, it's, it's called collective responsibility and patriotism. Okay. Where we now must be able to pay so that we resuscitate the infrastructure. Uh, if we are all to say we are not going to pay because there is no service, who is going to build the infrastructure for us? And when are we going to get the services? Uh, because we are not constructing, or we are not expanding, or we are not building new infrastructure. All right. Uh, the same happened mm -hmm. in 1890. Uh, those that came to settle here did not collect the, uh, the bills. They did not send out bills. They did not collect rent, rent or rents. But they thought that we should be able to do it for others who are going to come. So we are now beneficiaries of that selfless. Uh, initiative which was undertaken by Star Jamerson and, 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 and the other guys that he was working with mm -hmm. uh, because they had a foresight. Yeah. The same can be asked uh, to, the, to, the, to the person who has asked the question to say, I mean, more Pamaka Zarwa, Mune, the infrastructure, Maka Badra, Makona, Eripo. So, Tessa to benefit from it. Uh, my facilities are mm -hmm. carry, but we are going to go to the fund. We are going to go to the forever. Check it out. And we are not going to go to the As we are going my facilities are. And we are going to go to So there is what we call a generational responsibility, where you are supposed to do something for the next generation. So I won't uh, agree, I will not agree with uh, her assertion. Mm -hmm. I would say she's wrong, she's wrong and she's messing up for the next generation. All right. Masimbaka Seke, so what does the mayor suggest we do with these water so shortages given poholes are a danger? When are those water bowsers coming to the community? Yeah, we, 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 we have um, uh, paid for four and the four have been uh, deliver to council. We we now need to move to pay for the balance. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as we uh, we make payments for the balance, then they will be delivered and uh, distributed uh, uh, to the suburbs, which really requires a lot of water. And the last question that we'll take here, Munyara mm Zichijanje -hmm. asked, do you think by any chance mm -hmm. you will change the sewer system anytime as you assume that they are now old Akaiskwa Goya roads. We, 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 we obviously uh, did some work 
I've uh, alluded to the work that we undertook with uh, with um, um, liquid. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did some works, and um, uh, this is work in progress. You don't just uh, replace all of the piping, all, all of the piping that was done. We are talking of uh, five thousand to six thousand kilometer here. So what you do is uh, you do it gradually. You do a fifty. Then you move to do another fifty. Then you move to do another hundred. Then they will end up. To so in your in your in your tenure, uh, mayor, how many kilometers do you seek to have covered? As to what we have done now, looking at what we have done from twenty eighteen up to now, mm -hmm. we have done around eighty kilometers. And how many do you seek to do in the yeah, next four years? We would want to do around two thousand if okay. money is available. And that is dependent on the ability of the residents to support our initiatives. All right, Wilson Mapro, thank you for watching. Dryden Kunaga, Comrade Jinojaipa Muchati Roto, thank you so much for joining us on 60 Minutes with the MDC. We're hosting Mayor Councillor Herbert Gomba of City of Harare. Thank you, Mayor, for thank joining you. us. Thank you so much. Thank All you. All right.